Hey, how's everybody doing? This is JJ from Deluxe Vehicle Detailing and Paint Correction here in beautiful Seminole, Florida. And uh, today I am uh, going to be doing a rinseless wash, no hose, no bucket, no pressure washer, anything like that, right here in the garage. Got beautiful temperatures. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the couple that own this bike, they're at work. Uh, and I am going to take care of this bike right while it's here in the garage. And also tomorrow he's actually having black exhaust uh, put on uh, in place of the chrome exhaust. So this bike will be all, you know, dialed in as it goes into the shop tomorrow. This is a 2016 Indian Dark Horse. It's uh, got the matte black uh, paintwork, kind of almost a almost a gunmetal silvery, not like real real dark black, and uh, all the plastics and everything. It's pretty much a black bike, hence I believe the dark horse. So anyway, um, I'm just going to kind of take you around with some tools, some tips, some things you need to do a motorcycle detail such as this if you're a DIYer uh, you know you can have this already in your garage if you're mobile I'm going to show you my uh, checklist on this so that you can think about some things you might like to have so first I'm just going to kind of give you a little tour of the bike uh, as you can see there are some bug splatters some you know marks some just general uh dirtiness take you in here uh the owner he and his girlfriend which i have personally known these two for 20 some years give a little shout out to johnny and jane um they go out every sunday and they go for long sunday drives they go to different park systems and just all around out of all the craziness and chaos that is Pinellas County, which is the St. Pete Clearwater on the west coast of Florida. So I've got my 5000K lights. It's always great to have good lighting. I also have um, uh, a headlamp and I've got my paint inspection light. So can't stress enough good lighting you want to be able to see all up in I've got the light on the camera also so anyway just typical stuff uh, this soft pack was uh, <laughs> intricately strapped to the back here I just removed that but anything you can remove usually like if, it's, if your bike's got saddlebags things like that those are you know no tools you just pop uh, which would be these mountings and your saddlebags can go on. Um, I wanted to take this off just because it was kind of blocking the back of the seat and this. And, you know, obviously wasn't going to be able to get to the, uh, the rack and that. So you just want to try and, you know, take off what you can. If you can get seats and things like that off, do so. This bike's got some... Oh no, it looks to be some sort of substance that's gotten on it and leaked down. Um, really pretty nice shape. Like I said, these chrome pipes about to go tomorrow. And uh, there's a nice, love the Indian motorcycle logo. These are American made. Yep. I think Harley has kind of, I don't know if they're still saying American made. I think they're put together here, but... I've heard that Harleys uh, have a lot of foreign involvement, mirrors, all the controls. All right, so there we are around the bike. So as you've probably noticed, um, I've got a, a bunch of just kind of old sheets in this uh, box here. I've got a bunch of just old towels and tarps and things like that. Um, I do, uh, you know, I do rinseless washes of my car. Like I do the BMW right inside the garage and just put these all around the edges. You want to make sure you push it up into and under the 
motorcycle because you're going to be dripping things. You're going to probably have some, you know, grease and some cleaners and some dirt. So I did bring also a dustpan and a brush just to kind of clean up as I get done. I will be rolling the bike kind of back and forth. So something to think about too. You don't just put it underneath. I backed it up to give myself clearance in the back and then I can roll the bike up. That way I can get to all the uh, you know, the wheels, spokes, all that that are up under the uh, fender flares. And so, you know, you're going to be sitting. You might want to think about uh, having a, uh, you know, a, a seating on wheels kind of help you out. This is a nice little something I picked up a while back. This pad is from Harbor Freight. As you're down here, get your knees on. If you're not going to use the the, the uh, stool, and that way you're not going to you know have your knees on the cement, which gets quite uncomfortable. I think that pad at Harbor Freight is all of about eight ten dollars. So you're going to need a lot of cloths. I uh, I have my cloths marked in these bins as uh, you know A B C. Claws. These are my C. These can just be thrown away. I've got a bag of metal polishing claws. I've got uh, a number. This is kind of my general wheel bucket here. Threw a little extra in it, but you just can never have enough brushes, scrubbers, things that will get into tight places. I have done a whole... I think two different videos on these on eBay. They are amazing. Uh, little microfiber fingered brushes, some easy detail brushes. Um, you know, I've got lug nut brushes, other brushes. Uh, here I've got these nice uh, wheel wooly type in different sizes, brushes, scrubbers, just, just everything, right? Little brushes, tooth brushes. I've also got an amazingly large bag of all different other kinds of brushes because you can just never have too many. This is about uh, two feet long and this brush is great to be able to get up underneath the fenders and get up and clean that dirt. It'll go right around the wheel. It's on a flexible uh, you know, uh, uh, shaft, got a nice handle. The tip has a plastic cover, so you're not going to scratch anything. Again, when you're getting in on a motorcycle, all these little nooks and crannies and everything, you can just never have too many brushes. And, uh, I have no idea where I picked this up at. It's very random. It says made in, does that say Taiwan? Uh, I think so. Yeah, Taiwan. So, right. So, Again, a variety of brushes. I've got some, uh, some well, wheel mitts. These are new to me here. Kind of weird in the sun here. Let me bring you back out of here. So I just purchased these. They've got the bug scrubber side on one side. They've got some nice, um, you know, chenille type, kind of a small chenille reaching all around in the wheels in tight places. These I just bought, these are the Spock um, <laughs> variety of, hold on one second, sorry about that. You can get your fingers in there and you can get in between tight places, spokes. I uh, do uh, maintenance on an Alpina BMW and if you know anything about Alpina, they have all have 21 spokes. That's one of the things BMW does. These allow you to get around and in. All those places, also new to me. This is the, uh, uh, the I, I swear it was red line, but uh, maybe, yeah, I, actually the uh, letters kind of sink down into the red. I'm kind of dumb. But this is red line finish, and this is one of their nice, uh, you know, wool type uh, mitts. I thought that I might grab this. It might come in handy. And again... You just never, you know, you never, you can never have enough options. That's the way I look at it. So anyway, 
without getting incredibly wordy. I did kind of skip over, but I've got a variety of chenille wash mitts, things like that to get you in tight places. And then my setup is kind of like what I'm going to be using. I'm going to be starting out by spraying with, uh, this is O&R in a pump sprayer. I don't like, I mean, I have used hoses on motorcycles. Um, you can very carefully and from a distance use a pressure washer safely, although it's generally recommended not to. I've also got a regular trigger handle of ONR uh, for just the general wash. This is a uh, 256 to 1. That's one part of the product, 256 parts of distilled water. No water spotting is possible. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to spray everything down. That's going to be my first step of the whole process and just get all the major, you know, dirt, grime, filth. I'll roll the bike, I'll do the wheels, and then I'll start, you know, my cleaning process. So I've got um, some white diamond metal polish. Might be doing some of that, although without the exhaust pipes uh, being done, probably a limited amount. I've also got Neverdoll. This product by Eagle One has never let me down. It leaves protection behind. The white diamond also leaves a really nice uh, sealant and protection that lasts quite a bit a long time. Um, various brushes. These are medical cotton type tipped swabs of different lengths and sizes. Again, you can never have too many. I've got the uh, blue, this is the uh, safe, scratch-free type pad if something's kind of stubborn. I also use mascara brushes for the tight places. Go and rage your wife, daughter, girlfriend, uh, whoever might have a supply of mascara brushes in different sizes. That's great. You know, many brushes, many different types. These are the foam uh, easy to find, cheap, kind of just disposable uh, brushes, get into tight places. I've got uh, some WD-40. Uh, I've noticed in the past when I've done this bike, you know, a little bit of uh, rust can start to form. This just breaks it up and makes it easy to remove WD-40. I was actually holding the super clean bottle, but I've got the trigger WD-40 and uh, the non-aerosol and also the aerosol. Uh, a penny between before 1983, which is all copper, can be used to maybe scrape off some boot markings on um, uh, some of uh, the chrome, and that works quite well if you get a little melted boot mark. And uh, I like to use uh, Citrol 266 by Schaefer's. This is a one part Schaefer. Uh, citral and three parts water uh, again used sparingly cleaned off quickly it can really help soften bugs rubber marks paint transfer all kinds of stuff like that i'm a big i buy citral by the gallon um, i've got some you know heavy duty simple green i've got some super clean i already showed you i've got the super clean aerosol nice to spray into tight areas and then maybe use the you know the little swabs to really get in there and then you want to you know spray some of the onr and and clean that up mop it up i'm going to be uh coating the matte finish and so i want it nice and clean afterwards this is optimum uh, paint prep Great product. Clean the paintwork before I apply the Meguiar's Ultimate Fast Finish. I've just found for matte paintwork, this stuff is really, really good. It will get the job done. I will be doing the leather, the rubber, and the plastics in one of my favorite products, 303 Aerospace Protectant. It was designed for the space shuttle initially for all the harsh conditions. They've got some leather brushes. These things, uh, again, you can find them on eBay and pay about $3. Or you can pay like $12 and order them from some of the other type places. I've got some uh, A-quality claws for putting the fast finish on. This is a bag of free microfiber towels that I try to give away to all of my uh, clients that come by the house and everything. 
I said before, I've got the light. This is my paint inspection light, the uh, 50SL by Astronomatic. I've also got a, my plug-in rechargeable headlamp. Absolutely necessary as you're looking at all different kinds of weird angles. You know, having a basic light system on the bike is great, but you're going to need something a little more. Um, I also am going to be using uh, a steamer. And, you know, maybe I will, maybe I won't. I'm not going to go crazy with it. But the power of heat really does help in any type of cleaning, no matter what you're doing. And then I've got my bucket here to put my microfibers and rags in. So it's nice to have that handy as my McCullough steamer will produce a little water in the line. So it'll kind of shoot some water if it sits for a while. Um, nice to be able to just clear that out and go to the straight steam. I've got my PPE bag with all my goggles and gloves and all that kind of stuff. That bag there, I've taken some of it out, but that's my interior detailing bag. And then I have a heated, filtered blower for the end, drying things off. I will be uh, using this probably a couple different times just to try and clear the water off the surfaces in an easy manner. And, you know, a lot of those surfaces, it's really hard to get it out there. Yeah, you can start the bike up and kind of warm it up after you finish drying and it'll help get the remaining. But you can blow this out and it's uh, got an adjustment here where you can see if I can show you here. You can lighten up the blowing action by opening up this vent. Get that there. See that? Then you can close it off and get more blowing action. I uh, taped the end just so that you, the plastic will not mar anything. So it's got some nice soft plastic wrapped around it in this, uh, I believe this is uh, uh, Gorilla Glue tape, which is absolutely amazing product. And uh, again, this is a two-speed by X-Power, heated, filtered. The heat, again, takes a lot of the work out of it for you because you can just heat the water and residue up and then it will be dry so that pretty much covers my process i did promise you i would show you my checklist so let me get in a good spot here and i will hope this shows up i'm actually going to turn hope this didn't <laughs> Okay, you guys all know I suck at videoing, right? Don't do any editing. Um, I hope you can get a good look at this. I'll, I'll stay on it here for just a sec just so that you can uh, get the whole picture if you want to do a freeze frame. While you're doing that freeze frame, give me a like. Give me a share. Hit the notification bell. Bing! And that way you can be notified of great new videos as they come out. I think I'm around 200 videos Still climbing towards that thousand subscription. So if you wouldn't mind, you know, hit that subscription. Give me a like, make some comments, share this with the motorcycle driver in your life. I'm going to give you now the rundown from top to bottom closer. And you can see, you know, my, my A cloths, my, you know, C cloths, metal polishing. Uh, here I've got VRP or the uh, Aerospace 303, right? Da, da, da. Get you a little closer. Pump sprayer with the O&R. Bucket with some O&R. I've got the uh, Simple Green in there today. Just to throw all my towels in afterwards. Didn't mention that before. I've got Invisiglass here. You can use any kind of glass cleaner. Um, you know, in the fairing, you can use uh, uh, a purple, purse. Perspex uh, G5 um, by uh, G Technic, and uh, that is some really good stuff. Kind of, uh, kind of like a uh, Rain-X. Uh, you might, if you want glossy for saddlebags, ask your client or ask yourself: Do you want glossy or do you not want glossy? Uh, headlamps, inspection lights, gloves, the floor towels, blah de blah. A little reminder to myself: plug the exhaust pipes with rags so you don't get water up in them. Another little tip for you. I even drew the long brush here. Lots of brushes. Selection of small wheel brushes. 
DOS pan, and Plastex. Plastex is possible. Steamer, sealant towels. Uh, King's Guard is a uh, um, you know a topper that's a ceramic titanium from Dallas Paint Correction. I'm not using that in this case because it would add gloss to the matte paint. Um, you know that can be an upgrade. Seats, Hans. There's my penny. So anyway, that's the whole shebang. I will give you the flip side. I thank each and every one of you for checking out this video. Really, really would make a big uh, uh, impact on me if you could just, you know, hit that subscription. I am trying to grow this channel. I've stopped caring about, you know, trying to be like, oh, I'm so big like others. Uh, I don't care. I don't care about the numbers, but I do care about the subscriptions and the likes and especially the notification bells because that way I know you want to see more great videos from myself. And uh, I try and cover a lot of different things that you wouldn't normally see on other detailing channels because after you do it for a while, you've kind of like covered it all. So I want to keep doing the same stuff over and over again. But I've been doing some boats, got some videos coming up on that right away. And uh, I love doing motorcycles. It's actually a lot of work. It's about as much work as doing a car. It's, it's a four-hour job for me, minimum. So anyway, give you the flip side. Show you the beautiful bike again. And I thank each and every one of you. Enjoy making your vehicles beautiful or making them beautiful for someone else if you're a professional detailer. Until next time, I will see you on the flip side.